No, my question is, um, we start in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, and we will read the first verse. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Ajuna Ubachan. Shasya sitte set kamanaste Mata bhude chanatana Tat kim kamani go emam Neo yaya sike shaba Ajuna set o chanatana ke shaba why do you want me to engage in this ghastly warfare if you think that intelligence is better than food if work? That, um, so in the purport near the end, Arjuna also thought of Krishna consciousness or Buddha Yoga or, in, or, or intelligence in spiritual advancement of knowledge as something like retiring from active life and practice pen, penance and austerity in a secluded place. In other words, he wanted to skillfully avoid fighting by using Krishna consciousness as an excuse for that. Right? That's so. Uh, he was thinking renunciation and action that's not compatible. Either I renounce or I work. But Krishna consciousness is that combination, working with attachment to the results and that renunciation, and for Krishna, for the pleasure of Krishna, either to Barnashram or either directly, intentionally. That, um... So in other words, after hearing knowledge, of Jnan and then of Buddha Yoga, Krishna consciousness from Krishna, Arjun misunderstands Buddha Yoga as retirement from active life. And he thinks renunciation is going to the forest practice of austerities in a secluded place. Actually, this was an excuse for avoiding the fight that. Um, so sometimes the neophyte devotees have the same misconception. Krishna consciousness is going to chant in a secluded place, but the, 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 that um, but the only gain is cheap adoration from the innocent public. No, the voice in the service is service. <laughs> That's uh, in the beginning, Srila Prabhupada, especially in the beginning, we have to work. That uh, when Prabhupada asked the Buddhists in New York to chant 64 ounces, he said, No, we cannot do that. And he reduced it to 32. And then the Buddhists said, It's still too much. <laughs> we cannot do it. He brought it to 16. He said, 16, but you have to do service. The service will also purify that. Um, now, text two, Arjun is continuing. Pyamishane vivakyana buddhi moya yasiva me tatikam vadanishitya yena shriyaham apnoyam. My intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instructions. Therefore, please tell me decisively which will be the most beneficial for me that and then Lord Krishna starts to reply Shri Bhagavan Vatsa Lokismantri Vida Nishta Pura Pokta Mayanagam Yana Yogena Sankhyanam Kama Yogena Yoginam 
the supreme personality of God had said, O sinless Arjun, I've already explained there are two classes of men who try to realize the self. Some are inclined to understand it by empirical philosophical speculation and other by devotion and service. So he said, O sinless of sinless Arjun, he says, sinless is anaga, just sinless. To understand Krishna conscious philosophy, one must be sinless. One must follow the four related, related principles. Otherwise, avitam jnanam etina, Krishna will say, say in this chapter. Your intelligence will be covered with lust, your eternal knowledge, your spiritual knowledge. You will not be able to uh, understand. So Arjun is qualified to understand his knowledge. He is, he is anaga. That uh, sometimes the boys are very enthusiastic to preaching to new people, and these new people do not want to be instructed by us. And still, we want to. We, we want to put all the, the philosophy in and, and, and push it in the, into their minds. <laughs> but what will our five minutes preaching to do Prabhupada? No. It's not possible for them to, to, to understand. But if they buy a book, they get some piety because they pay mm -hmm. for it. And then by that piety, if they start reading the book, maybe something they will understand. But, um, yes. So, in the second chapter, verse 39, the Lord explained two kinds of procedure. Samkhya Yoga and Karma Yoga or Buddha Yoga. So karma yoga, yoga, buddhi yoga, Krishna consciousness, all the same. Hmm? Karma yoga in its perfection is Krishna consciousness. Buddhi yoga is just another name. Don't be confused about that. that uh, sometimes the words are confused about that. what is this karma yoga. This karma yoga you have on different, different levels. First level, we heard 247. You do your duty without being attached to the result. And now we will hear the next level in 39 in this, in a few moments. We will hear that Chaknachta Karma Noya Kalukriyam Karma Bandhu. That's the next level. But there are more levels of of, of uh, Karma Yoga. That uh, the highest level is Patram Pushapalam Chamiomi Bhaktiya Prasi. You do it out of love for Krishna. But we cannot jump to that. The Karma Yoga has stages. In the beginning, we do, we try to do the activity without being attached to the result. But not easy. The next stage, we uh, do the activities. We don't think of Krishna, but at the end, we give the result to Krishna. That's the second level. The third level is Yatkaros, Yatasas, Yatkaros, Dadas, Yatkaros, 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 Mamat, Astanam, 927, where Krishna says, yeah. Whatever you do, whatever story you, you do, whatever charity you do, whatever work you do, do it for me. So do the work itself for Krishna and give the result to Krishna. That's something else. That's already thinking of Krishna while you do it. And then the highest level is 926. Offer me with love, with love. A flower, or some water, or uh, a leaf. Yes. So this should always be understood. 
his different levels, but it's all Krishna consciousness. It's a process to come to that higher level of karma yoga, which is Krishna consciousness. And, but Prabhupada takes everything as Krishna consciousness, the highest. Karma yoga is Krishna consciousness for Prabhupada in this book. That should be understood because in the perfection it is Krishna consciousness. Hmm? Further. The, this Buddha yoga is dependent entirely on the Supreme. And in this way, all the senses can be brought under control very easily. Therefore, both the yogas are inter interdependent as religion and philosophy. Religion without philosophy is sentiment or sometimes fanaticism. And philosophy without religion is mental speculation. The ultimate goal is Krishna because the philosophers were sincerely searching after the absolute truth come in the end to Krishna consciousness. This is also stated in Bhagavad Gita. The whole process is to understand the real position of the self in relation to the super self. Process is understanding the self in relation to the super self. Krishna consciousness means living in a relationship with Krishna in the heart constantly. The relationship between the self and the super self. The indirect process is philosophical speculation. This Sankhya is an indirect process that uh, don't take it. <laughs> indirect process. Krishna will uh, clarify that in the seventh chapter. Bhaunam jhanamam te jhanamam nam papachati vasti upsevam tisamatnam sudurum. After many, many births, they come to understand Krishna is the source of everything. And then it's up to them what they do. After many, many births, so that's the indirect path, is after many, many, many births. But uh, the indirect path is philosophical speculation by which hardly one comes to the point of Krishna consciousness, gradually, many lifetimes. And the other pose is directly connecting everything with Krishna in Krishna consciousness. That's the direct path, Krishna consciousness. So, yes, important to remember is both yogas are inter interdependent. That, uh, that's important. That... Uh, if we practice religion without philosophy, it's sentimentalism. Then your faith is very faint. No faith. Please. Both yogas are interdependent, interrelated. Yeah, you can one cannot without the other. And and and, there is, and the other is philosophical speculation without religion. It's dry speculation. Mm -hmm. So these two are there. Like, if you don't know who Krishna is from the scriptures, hmm? if you don't have that knowledge, you cannot know that you are a, you are a, a small part of Krishna. And you cannot know that you are a servant of Krishna. So you must have knowledge, at least to begin devotional service. And that knowledge to begin devotional service is technically called Sambandhajyam, the knowledge of our relationship with Krishna. You must have that knowledge, or you cannot properly perform devotional service. If you think that God is Brahman, and that, uh, yeah, then you cannot perform devotional service just by that. No, it's a source of Brahman, it's Parabrahman. You must have knowledge, otherwise it's sentiment, and your relationship with Krishna will not develop, because you are not established properly in Sambandha Gyan. Haridas Thakur in Harinam Sintamna makes the same point. 
to overcome the offenses, we must properly situate it in Sambanda Gyan. Understand, we are a servant of Krishna. We are a humble servant of the holy name. That in that service attitude, we can understand by studying the Bhagavatam. Therefore, chanting and reading the Bhagavatam goes together. Together. Both we must daily do. Therefore, Prabhupada has as established this morning for them. Bhagavatam class. Every day. Point four. Not by merely abstaining from work can one achieve freedom from reaction, nor by an initiation alone can one attain perfection. And in the purpose, Shila Prabhupada writes, without purification of heart, it is simply one is just, but without purification of heart, of the heart, sannyas is simply a disturbance of the social order. So if those who want to take sannyas, you must be nearly pure in heart. Otherwise, you will be a disturbance. That, uh, that is what Krishna says here. We must all take sannyas in the heart. It's not so, it's only the order of sannyas. Sannyas means, means giving up material designs. That's the meaning of sannyas. Sannyas at the 18th chapter. 18th chapter. Krishna personally defines what sannyas is. Yeah. Krishna asked the difference between renunciation, tya, and pronounced order, sannyas. And Krishna said, answered in the next verse. And then, uh, so, Keeping up the activities based on material desires is what the learned now call the renounced order of sannyas. Keeping up all, my, all activities based on material desires. But therefore, you must purify the heart first by working, by doing service. You purify the heart. That... Um, so we'll see what our acharyas say on this. So this is in the introduction, what our acharya says about this chapter we mentioned in the beginning. Just an overview. And then verse four. This is the commentary of Vishvanachika Vartitako. Without performance of prescribed karmas, a person cannot attain purity. Just by renunciation of activities, an impure person cannot attain perfection. You can renounce and go to the forest, but the desire is still in your heart. And it will, the desire will, break you, will bring you back at a certain time. But um, the desire is still there. That, uh, yes. That. So we must purify our heart. And the only way to purify our heart is serving Krishna. Krishna is antiseptic, is the purifier in our heart. If we have Krishna in our heart, we will become purified shortly of our designs. But, uh, Krishna Natsuka Vakta, Without performance of prescribed karmas, a person cannot attain purity. Without purity of heart, Yan does not arise. So Krishna's that's important. If the heart is impure, you cannot have realization of transcendental knowledge. That's not possible. That by not engaging in activities recommended in the scriptures, one cannot attain Jan. So to attain the realization of transcendental knowledge is not by it's just by study the books. It's by devotional service. Krishna gives you the understanding and the realization to the heart. It's a different process. It's not an intellectual endeavor. So a person with impure heart, Baladev says, cannot attain steadiness in Jnana or detachment from action in the form of stopping the actions of all the senses. 
without performing prescribed actions as part of the cultivation of Kyan. It's quite intellectually explained. It's the same thing. Shila Prabhupada says, without purification of the heart, sannyas is simple, simply a disturbance to the social order. Yeah. So that is one of the functions of the ministry for sannyas. For sannyas candidates, make sure they have a high level of purity of heart. That, uh, and what qualities must one have as a sannyasi to be pure in heart? That uh, abhaya, sattva, samstudhi, jnana, jnana yoga, vyavastiti. That uh, he must be fearless. Fearless and detachment are going together. If you are detached, you are fearless. That uh, sattva, samstudhi, he must be purified in heart. Purification. And jnana yoga, vyavastiti, he must be learned in the scriptures. Must have realization, some realization at least. That's, uh, yes. A reflection, how do, due to my impure heart, I become a disturbance to others. You remember? Times in your life you became a disturbance for others because of purity in heart. <laughs> I think we all had that if we are honest. But uh, we became a disturbance for others. Do you think that all that I have belongs to me? If not, who is then the proprietor? Then what is the meaning of real detachment? That's the meaning of real detachment. That uh, uh, this is a, a Buddhist, a Buddhist they are into detachment. That uh, and one disciple asked the the Buddhist master, can I use email? And he said, yes, but without detachment. Without attachment. <laughs> anyway, that's five. Okay, five. Na ye kachit sham mapi atu tistas akarmakit karyate yabasa karma sarvam parati jarakunai. Everyone is forced to act helplessly according to the qualities he has acquired from the modes of material nature. Therefore, no one can refrain from doing something, not even for a moment. That, um, well, in the purport, it is not a question of embodied life, but it is the nature of the soul to be always active. But, um, the, the, the spirit soul has to be engaged in good work of Krishna consciousness, otherwise it will be engaged in occupation dictated by the illusory energy. And there is nothing between that. You have to engage. Especially our mind, we have always to engage. If the mind is idle, it's a devil workshop. It will engage us. Hmm? I tell always the story of the man who had the bottle. In the bottle is a gin kind of spirit. He opens the bottle and the jinn comes out and bows down before him. I'm your servant, the jinn said. Please engage me. I will do whatever you ask. But if you are not engaging me for one second, I will kill you. And the man immediately said, clean the kitchen. And the jinn was cleaning the kitchen. I was thinking, if he's finished, I'm going to say, and he had finished, he said, now the sleeping room. Then when all the rooms were done, he was saying to the spirit, now you go outside, you see this tree there, you climb on top of the tree, if you are on top of the tree, then you jump to the next tree and you come down. And then 
you go to the next tree, you go again to the top, you jump to the next tree, you come down. And like this, you do all the trees in the forest. And when you're finished, you start again. That's, and that's the way you got rid of the... But the same is for, for us. If we don't engage our, our mind even a second in Krishna consciousness, not in Krishna consciousness, we are in Maya. And the mind engages us. There is nothing between. We have to understand that. Always engage the mind in Krishna conscious business. That is a, a very important aspect. We will discuss that in 6.5 and 6.6 also in the 6th chapter. So all, learn always to engage the mind in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, one will be dictated by the illusory energy power parts. It. it is necessary to do prescribed duties and join in the Shastra. That, uh, and that is what we are studying, this Karma Yoga, Shastra, how to do them. So, the purificatory process is necessary for reaching this point of Krishna consciousness. The first we must purify that uh, before we really can fix our mind on Krishna. That, um, so here, if a person with impure heart renounces prescribed activities, accepting Vedic karma sannyas, he reverts to material action, for a person cannot remain inactive. He cannot remain for even a moment being active. So the word karma sannyas is used here. We have different sannyas. Um, we have karma sannyas. Karma sannyas in the Vedic sin, sin, the system, when you get, get old, you go away from the family. And that's, that was sannyas without any knowledge. Without any knowledge. In sannyas, four things are so forbidden. And one thing that is forbidden is this karma sannyas. That not Vaishnava sannyas. That uh, not impersonal sannyas. That's not forbidden. But this karma sannyas is forbidden. So we have to be careful. Karma sanyas. What is karma sanyas? I'm speaking about karma sanyas. Oh, it's different from that. This this is Vedic sanyas, and it's different from Vaishnava sanyas or impersonalist sanyas, which is taken with knowledge. Impersonalists have the knowledge of impersonal Brahman. And the Vaishnava Sanyas has knowledge that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Karma Sanyas is no knowledge. And that's forbidden. That when, but because if you take Sanyas without knowledge, Baladev Vidyabhu's answer, yes, you. You will revert to material action because the material desires in your heart are still there and you have to act according to material desires. So the point is one must be active in devotional service. That, uh, that's important. Um, but sannyas is opposed to all activities. The next line an answers. By the qualities such as, as desire and repulsion, gunai arising from his faba, prakati jai, he will perform all action beyond, beyond his will. So it is said here, if one takes sannyas without knowledge, without purification of the heart, you will be forced to act. Your senses say, yeah, the first picture here, this lady said, I renounce. I give it up. That, but in the heart is still that uh, 
and then at the next at the next occasion the same person is overeating <laughs> that, because not only the, 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 that uh, you will be forced by material nature that um, to the, that is what Krishna says to Arjun Arjun even if you go to the forest and you become a beggar you become a beggar that but then if you hear that your dear Maharaj is in trouble, still by your nature, you will come and fight. <laughs> it, the nature, your nature, material nature will overcome you. You will have to do it. That you will be forced by material nature. So rather the person of impure heart who gives subscriptional activities becomes engrossed in material actions. So one must do the prescribed duties in the scriptures with this action in karma yoga, which is described here. That, uh, so the body is only a dead vehicle to be walked by the spirit soul, which is always active. To purify the soul from material attachment, it is necessary to engage in the prescribed duties and join in the shastras, which we are studying now here. Yeah. That um, how action actions in Krishna consciousness will help me to overcome desire and repulsion, repulsion, which are the cause of our attachment, fear, and anger. That's important. How will that happen? That because attachment, fear, and anger is a result of the body concept of life, and we. When you start to act as a spirit soul, Krishna starts to visit, to uh, to purify your heart, and purify your heart means it it takes away this attachment and aversion. You lose your interest in this world and all this attachment and aversion. We are in the door step, going out of room. We go uh, nearly out of the body. <laughs> What's the use to do that all this for this body? Why this attachment and aversion to the body? I have to keep it up. Hmm. First step. The first step. But in Krishna consciousness, the first step and the last step is the same. It's the is the is it, it, it is the action and the means. It, it is the beginning and the means. In the beginning, we chant Hare Krishna, okay? That uh, we dance before the deities. That uh, we hear about Krishna. We speak about Krishna. We do devotional service in so many forms. And if we have developed love for Krishna, what do we do? We chant Krishna's names. We serve Krishna that uh, we hear about Krishna, we do the same thing. That uh, beginning of end is the same, but in a different consciousness. But, uh, up. Three, six, okay, three, six. Kamandriya samyanya ya aste manasasmaran Indriya Tan Vimudatma Mityachara Sautchate Mityachara verse Mityachara. You must remember that word Mityachara, pretender. Mityachari is the pretender. Hmm? One who restrains the senses of action but whose mind dwells on sense objects. So he deludes himself and is called a pretender. So in the Pope writes, if one follows the rules and regulations of his particular status, he will make progress in purifying his in existence. A sinful man's knowledge are taken away by the illusory energy of the Lord. But it speaks also about that in the next 
purpose in the purpose he used to know the, the, he used to, the, the word show bottle spiritualism show bottle when Prabhupada was in New York he saw somewhere in a in, in a vitrine in, of the shop he saw a big bo bottle champagne but but inside it was empty it was to show <laughs> to show that uh, but inside empty that uh, it's a show externally making a show but internally impures that's the pretender that uh, externally make a show of a spiritualist but internally meditating on how to enjoy that uh, that is yeah that's he says but we see some such sannyas is the void of action of the senses with closed eyes this first answers he will control the sense of action such as speech or hands carmenriae walking senses but remains remembering the object of the senses under the pretense of meditation is a cheating, mithyachara. The five senses of action are the hands, feet, voice, anus, and genital. So, yeah, in simple words, is the brahmachari will present him outside as a stance brahmachari, but inside meditating on the girls. That uh, that's the mitya chara. And Krishna said, don't do that. Be be honest with yourself. Don't present yourself as yourself. Mm -hmm. Because of remembering sense objects in the mind, in spite of not extending the senses outwards, which arise because of impurity in the mind to not performing nishkam karma, this ignorant person attempting to control this attraction to material objects does not attain jnan, though he aspires for him. Attaining jnan here means getting realizations in the heart with Krishna consciousness. That will not come. That realized knowledge, if your heart is impure, as long as it is impure, it will be very difficult. Therefore, in the beginning, the purification of the heart is not easy in Krishna consciousness. It takes time. Anakti Nivriti, the, the purification of the heart, does not start from the first day. It takes a few years before it really starts. The, that because we have to be situated in the proper inner attitude. The, we, we chant Trinata, Pishna, Chinita, Ora, Vishris, Nama, Amana, Amana, Nakrakana, Svaru. But this is only the first part. That uh, the first part of the inner attitude. Then what, what does Lord Chaitanya say? Nadanam, Nadjanam, Nasunarim, Kavata, Vashi, Shikami, Mama, Chamami, Chamami, Shri Bhakta, Bhakta, Haid, Kitvan. I do not want, I do not desire any followers. No, I don't want any beautiful woman. I don't want wealth. I don't want liberation. That's part of the inner attitude to make. Uh, advancement but the problem is when our heart is impure we cannot develop that attitude and we become we don't become purified it's like a vicious circle that back to anton what's the vicious circle um, this is important to listen so what, what, what I'm saying is that we want to purify the heart. But when the heart is impure, we cannot share with the proper attitude. 
ki na tapis na jan na san na dan ma chunt and because we have still this attachment that it's like a vicious circle that you want to become purified but you cannot because these anaktas prevent you to develop the right attitude it's a vicious circle how to get out of it the way to get out of it is the mercy of the spiritual master that's Krishna's arrangement. He, therefore, he will say in the fourth chapter, that when a partner, a person, a civil production, to take him to a start production. If you accept the spiritual master, you serve him uh, with humility and uh, inquire from him about spiritual life, then, Kyat Kyat Vana Panaman, even Yasu Shipanaka. Then you start to see, you to get realizations. You can start to see how everything is connected with person. Then absitas above you, sabe bio papa ketuma sabe ngana probeni pa fits nam santeshi santeshi. Then you come on the boat of transcendental knowledge. Then Krishna start to purify your heart, pleasing the spiritual master is. To get out of this special circle. And we should remember that. Yeah. So don't be a cheater. This is a picture of the of a car of the British police. <laughs> anyway, no politics. There are many pretenders who refuse to work in Krishna consciousness but make a show of meditation while actually dwelling within the mind upon sense enjoyment. According to this verse, they are the greatest cheaters. So we have, we have to be careful. We have to learn who is advanced, who is not advanced by the spiritual qualifications. Many devotees may present themselves as, as uh, advanced, but if you then looked at their lives, they don't have a life to become advanced in Krishna. <laughs> But, uh, and they cause problems. The question is, do I want to give up all my material attachments? My affliction. But, uh, so, we spoke the other day about Brahma praying for three things. You still remember them, Gil? These three things mm -hmm. Brahma prayed for? Yeah, engagement in devotional service introspection, meaning uh, getting realist intelligence, and protection of mind. Yeah, the first is empowerment. 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 And the second is, like you said, that introspection, and then protection against Maya. Mm -hmm. Introspection, I put these questions here for your introspection. It a life teaching. Do I want to give up my material attachment? Look in your heart. Mostly, we are like the man who is embracing a tree. And he says to the tree, let me go, let me go. But he's embracing the tree. Then the guru comes and says, but you are embracing the tree, let it go. But, so we, we want to make advancement in devotional service. But we have these material desires. These material desires are prayers to Krishna to fulfill our material desires. Desires are prayers to Krishna. Krishna in the heart knows that. that um, okay. Seven. Yasvindriyani manasa niyamyar on the other hand, if a sincere person tries to control the active senses by the mind and begins karma yoga without attachment, he is by far superior. So in the paper, Srila Prabhupada said, a sincere sweeper in the street is far better than the charlatan meditator who meditates only for the sake of making a living. That, uh, so yes, 
The purpose of life is to get free from material bondage and go back to Godhead, Srila Prabhupada says. A householder also can reach this destination by regulated service in Krishna consciousness. So, so one should continue carrying out his business without attachment and by better and, and by and that's far better than the false pretender who adopts so battle spiritualism. So the point is Satva Samsude. We must strive for purification of our heart. Lavishvanat. He who free from attachment controlling the senses by the mind begins karma yoga with his active senses is superior. Hmm. And free from attachment, but we are not yet in that platform. Paladev, he will controlling the sense and the mind, aiming for the Atma, performs Karma Yoga with, with his active senses. At the same time, being free from attachment to the result is superior to a person who prematurely uh, acting prematurely from the position of Yang, but uh, yeah, trying to act as a liberated soul, but that um, controlling anxiety and stress to karma yoga. <laughs> I guess. A sincere sweeper in the street, here is him, is better than the charlatan here who meditates only for the sake of making a living. Reflections. Do I sincerely and humbly perform sadhana without pretension to promoting my own spiritual advancement? It's yeah. I'm the most humble person. I know. It's a devotee said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I'm the most fallen. Prabhupada replied, replied you, are, you are not the most of anything. It just falls ego. But, uh, mm -hmm. Or another devotee asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I'm the most fallen. And Prabhupada replied, yes, what are you going to do about it? But, <laughs> so that is in the inner reflection. 3.8. Niya tam ko kama tvam kama jaya kalmana sariya yata pisa te na pasidye akalmana Perform your prescribed duty for doing so is better than not working. One cannot maintain one's physical body without work. So in the purpose, a few lines down, Lord Krishna did not want Arjun to become a pretender. Rather, the Lord desired that Arjun perform prescribed duties as set forth for the Chatriyas. Arjun was a householder and military man, and therefore it was better for him to remain as such and perform his religious duties as prescribed for the householder Chatriya. So work should not be given up capriciously without purification of material propensities. Anyone who is in the material world is certainly possessed of the impure propensity for loading it over material nature. Or in other words, sense gratification. Such polluted propensities have to be cleared. Without doing so, to prescribe duties, one should never attempt to become a so-called transcend transcendentalist renouncing work and living at the cost of others. These are comments of our uh, acharyas. But, uh, Moreover, by renouncing all actions, you cannot even maintain your material body, say Ayatra, because he must maintain the body Purified by sadhana, as long as he lives, even the jnani performs actions such as begging for food. So, you must do something to, make, to maintain the body. 
least you must eat. You will bring the food to your mouth <laughs> and so on. But, so we, we, we need to be active. Perform your daily scriptural duties. This is better than not acting. You cannot even maintain your body by non-action. <laughs> we'll work for food after my benefits. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That, uh, that's the mentality today. Everyone who is in the material world is certainly possessed of the impure propensity for loading it, loading it over material nature. Or in other words, for sense, for sense gratification. Without purification, one should never attempt to become a so-called transcendentalist, renouncing work and living at the cost of others. Stop depending on others. Be yourself. Selfishness. A fantastic way to be miserable. Very <laughs> question. Okay. Reflections. Why do you why do I want to give up my why do I not want to give up my attachment? Afraid losing benefits or incure only discomforts? Is a deep question it's for your reflection. Three nine. Three nine is the essential verse, or is a key verse in this chapter. Chak nafta kama nuya pya lokiam kama banna tatakam kama kanti amukta sangat samacha. Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise, work causes bondage in this, in this material world. Therefore, son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction. And in that way, you will always remain free from bondage. That, uh, in the, the second paragraph, starting with, therefore, one has to work. Can someone read this second paragraph? Therefore, one has to go. Therefore, one has to go to the satisfaction of Vishnu. In other words, wandering in the material world would be called wandering. The both could have been reward by the reaction. And any reaction binds the performer. Therefore, one should work with the consciousness to satisfy the Vishnu or Vishnu. And while the good performs the subject of the in a liberated state. This is the great art of doing work. In the beginning of this process, you find very different diets. One should therefore act very diligently under the expert guidance of the body of the Krishna or under the direct instruction of the Krishna himself. Nothing should be performed for sense gratification, but everything should be done for the satisfaction of Krishna. This practice will not only save one from the reaction at work, but also gradually limit one to the sentimental learning phase of the law, which alone can raise one to the kingdom of God. So now we see here Krishna before he said, Come on, if I for the cast team, I flesh Kadachna, you should do your work, but not attached to the results. And now he says, you do your work as a sacrifice for Krishna, for Vishnu. You do it for Krishna. That uh, directly. That, um, so, Baladevidya Bhushan, without performing actions for Krishna, the people of the world are bound by their actions. You become responsible for your action. That, uh, if you do it on the order of Krishna, then there is no reaction and you become purified. But if you do it based on material desires for this body, for my so-called false self, then you get reactions. You are responsible that, uh, for your actions. Otherwise, if you are working for the boss, the boss is responsible. You have to work for the boss. The boss is Krishna. That, uh, without performing actions for Vishnu, the people of the world are bound by their actions. 
person of content perform actions for him, great form of attachment to the results. This is Vishwanath. So this is karma, the domino blocks. You see what's going to happen. <laughs> it's going around, 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 and it comes back. That uh, it pushes the domino, and finally at the end, so that so it doesn't see how he will be the. He will be smashed by it that uh, he thinks it's all all right. And that's the people. I can do whatever I want. Krishna thinks, yes, do whatever you want. Good luck. <laughs> that uh, those who kill animals, especially cows, they will die in wars. That uh, we see what happens today. That, uh, Yes. Okay. Thank you. That uh, agreed. But, uh, okay. Yes. But even if I perform actions which are offered to Vishnu, if I become, if I perform them with desires, then I will still become bound. One should become the void of desires for results. Mukta that is what Vishwanath says. That, um, don't become a Sakam Bhakta. Still, you have reactions. Yes. I thought if, uh, if I offer my actions or the results to Vishnu, then for the Vishnu, then it's uh, no karma there. Then you will become purified. Mm -hmm. but, but offering your results to Krishna without desire for enjoyment. Uh -huh. The enjoyment, the sacrifice is for Krishna, not for you. <laughs> if you say, that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not uh, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. It's not like that. <laughs> that's like how um, we cannot do it. And, uh, yeah, we must do it for Krishna. But, uh, Walking in Krishna consciousness is in the liberated stage. Then you act as a soul, not as the body. In the beginning, this process required expert guidance over the body of Lord Krishna. It's not so easy. That um, It's easy to chant, yeah. But performing the voiceless service, it's easy and not easy. It's easy for those who are simple. Yes. Why in the beginning? Please. Why in the beginning? In the beginning, this process requires guidance over the devotee of Lord Krishna because you are required in, in the beginning. The spiritual master teaches you how to perform devotional service. He will tell you you have to take a bath in the morning. You have to put up tilak, and so you, mu you must put the mantras, and so on. So in the beginning, you need guidance. So the devotees explain how to do that. Hmm? Hmm? Why only in the beginning? Yeah, in the so beginning, it, it requires expert guidance. Because when you when you become advanced, you must you must learn to create the ability to engage yourself in devotional service. It's like a child. A child, in the beginning, you have to teach everything. But the child has to learn to walk. You have to learn to walk, not remain a child. That's the part. part. We have to become adult in Krishna consciousness and take our own responsibility. That, you know, Expert guidance. Time management. What is the best way to assure that I always act for Krishna's pleasure? How much of my time do I act for Krishna's pleasure in a day? Good. 
next the next section now krishna will speak about the sacrifices and he will give us more details he will he, he will speak about how the sacrifices is nothing new it exists since the beginning of the creation the sacrifices that uh, because of course the demigods they do also sacrifices with brahma to for with brahma and shiva present and they do it what's the purpose of their sacrifice is it's a sacrifice for Lord Vishnu. He appears in the sacrifice. That's the purpose. And that exists since time immemorial. That uh, and Krishna, he mentioned this text then. Sajakya prashistva povacha padapati anena prasavityatam esavos vistakamadu. In the beginning of creation, the Lord of creatures sent four generations of men and demigods along with, along with sacrifice for Vishnu and blessed them by saying, Be thou happy by this, Shakya, because its performance bestowed upon you everything desirable for living happily and achieving liberation. That, um, so the purpose of creation is to teach the all the conditioned souls how to perform jakya for the satisfaction of Vishnu. In this way, they can live comfort comfortably without anxiety. Krishna will say in Bhagavad Gita 9:25, Ananya Sintiantimam Yitsana Payapas Dete Samnitya Bhyam Yoga Shema Vamyam. For my devotee, he said, I will carry what he needs. That uh, and protect what he has. Krishna takes care if you perform this jakya. That uh, in this way they can live comfortably without anxiety in a material world and go back to God at death. The best sacrifice in this age is Sankirtan Jakya. Brought to us by Sitchitanya Mahaprabhu. That uh, Srila Prabhupada repeated now in the in the next verses again and again. The chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Ram. So this was text 10 in the second page. The Lord created this material world to enable the conditioned soul to learn how to perform jakya sacrifices for the satisfaction of Vishnu, so that while in the material world they can live comfortably without anxiety, and after finishing the present material body, they can enter into the kingdom of God. That is the whole program for the conditioned soul. In the age of Kali, the Sankirtan jakya, the chant of the holy names is recommended them that's because therefore lord krishna has appeared krishna varman tvisaki sam sanko pangastra parshanam jakhya sankhanam paya yanti sumidasa in the age of kali people who are endowed with sufficient intelligence will worship the lord who is accompanied by his associates by performing Performance of Sankirtan Jakya. Other Jakyas prescribed in the Vedic literature are not easy to perform in this age of Kali. But the Sankirtan Jakya is easy and sublime for all purposes as recommended in Bhagavad Gita. Baladev Vidya Bhushan. Vishnu, having created the population along with sacrifice in the beginning, spoke, May you increase yourself by this sacrifice. May it fulfill your desire for liberation by supplying bodily maintenance and knowledge of Atma. It will give realization to the heart, knowledge of Atma. 
this verse shows that it is wrong to maintain the body without sacrifice for Vishnu. And we will hear more about that in the next verses. Therefore, one with an impure heart should perform actions without desire rather than give up action. Now, if you cannot be without desire in the actions, then you should still perform actions offered to Vishnu with desire rather than giving up its actions completely. This is explained in seven verses. This, the next verses we will hear about it. The material creation is a chance offered to the conditioned souls to come back home, back to God. The Vedic principles are to help us understand our relationship with Krishna or Vishnu. The Sankirtan Jahi is recommended for the age of Kali. Is now a question. Is Jahya followed Vishnu an integral part of my life? How much of my time do I dedicate to devotional service? We should do this Jahya. Always. That thing. Okay. We will stop here. And that any questions? Yes. Uh, there was another reflection before the 3.9 verse. It's, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, I reckon that it's one of Yeah. Any other questions? Good. And we will break up and see each other again at 11 to dive deeper in this exciting third chapter of Gita. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.